Welcome back everyone. Let's uh, take a look at another FEMAP tutorial. In this one we're gonna take a look at a beam with some distributed load on it and we're gonna uh, take a look how can we set up an actual T beam with the following dimensions that we can see right here. Alright, let's get started. We start by setting up our geometry which will be simply a line, curve, line uh, with coordinates uh, let's start from the origin and uh, our beam needs to be 2 meters long so we'll put a 2 in the x direction okay here it is cancel that out next up let's go to material model material uh, let's see my material Young's modulus was 70 E9, Poisson's ratio 0 0.33, 0 0.33. Um, isentropic, right? Isotropic. Okay, everything else good. Cancel. Next, let's set up our property right here. Uh, I'm gonna call it my beam. Pick the material that we just defined. Uh, go to element property type we're gonna pick the bar we could pick the beam too but it's kind of an overkill for us because that incorporates other more uh, specific and specialized theories as well like it would incorporate the warping effect if the shear centers not uh, coincide with the natural axis of the beams cross section the non prismatic beams so we don't need those extra details so for us uh, just a simple bar will do the same good job click OK click on shape and from here we're gonna pick from the standard draw library that uh, FEMAP has to us right here T section good now we need our details that were given in the problem width 0 0.15, height 0 0.20, thickness of looks like the top part and the, the, web, uh, the, web and the web and the flange both the same thickness so okay 0 0.02 so height 0 0.2 0 0.2 uh, what the thickness was 0 0.02 and width was 0 0.15 and the thickness of the top was also 0 0.02 good all right click ok and we can see that all the fields have been filled out with information from the uh, t shape that we just uh, filled out and actually i wanted to look at some more i just clicked on the shape see shape go back here's the shape that we uh, drew a minute ago you can click on this draw section if you didn't have it drawn yet and then it'll draw it and display information about it and <clears throat> another info important part is right here how do we orientate its local coordinate axis this is important in a lot of places when you're dealing with bigger geometry and you need to figure out how you're gonna orientate your beam when you placing it on top of something sideways upside down downside up whatever for me I'm gonna change the y-axis from the side to point upwards so up there you go y going up now and OK now we can click OK and cancel this one out there you go now we are ready to mesh uh, our problem asked us to create 10 finite elements so let's go ahead and do that mesh mesh control size along curve that's the only curve we have select it okay number of elements put in 10 equal elements okay cancel it out we can see the seeds we're gonna have 11 nodes with 10 elements let's visualize it label control Q and then go label node and element information I want to be displaying uh, okay and now let's go and actually mesh geometry and curve pick the curve 
OK. Pick the property, my beam. That's the one we defined a minute ago, right? Pick that. Everything else, leave it as is. Click OK. Now it's asking how do we want to orientate the tube shape beam that we defined earlier in this space over here. And remember, we defined the local y axis of that drawing to point upward, right? So that's what it's asking. How do we want to define its local axis versus the local axis here, I mean the global axis here that we have in the in front of us. Okay, so we can uh, let's see, define it by the global axis and we want to extend it upright with the matching the global y axis. So pick y and positive and but uh, you could orientate along a vector or along some other shape or geometry that you already had and you just want to add this to it so there's other options okay so for simplicity we're going to pick y and positive click okay and remember we visualized all our nodes and elements and there you go now we have them and we can also go to uh, view options and here labels element uh, orientation shape show orientation and over here show cross section and that one leave it as is apply okay and there you go now we can even visually see not just uh, the line that we had we can actually see our t-shape that we set up how they look how they stand nice also see those white little arrows those are showing you the local y-axis that we set up in our drawing when we were doing the properties that's showing you how it is, does it stand right now after you aligned it so just uh, another reference for you to make sure that you got what you were looking for. Okay, push F6 and we can turn it off and back on. See, that's the Y little axis and the uh, line plane only, apply and okay. We can even leave those there. <laughs> we know it's a reminder which way things uh, are pointing. Now we are ready for our boundary conditions. On one side, let's see our drawing. This will be fixed and here we have a pin. Okay, so go up to model, cons uh, constraint, constraint on point. Let's call it boundary conditions, BCs. Okay, pick the point. Okay. This one, I'm going to call it left side, and uh, fixed, okay, pick the other end, okay, I'm going to call it right end, right side, and this one is going to be a pinned, okay, that's all our boundary conditions, you can verify, you see the little F, you see the T, T for the translation is zeroed out, that's what the pin is, rotations allowed, here everything is zeroed out. Now we are ready to apply a load, 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 load on curve, I'm gonna call it uh, just F, forces, ok, select our curve, ok, this one, my Q, the Q, because this one is called Q, and it's going to be a constant, and it's a distributed load, okay, to make sure that you don't pick force, it's force per length. Q, it's a constant force, and its magnitude going to point along the negative Y axis, so it's going to be negative, what was the distributed load? 100. There you go. It's really negative 100. Okay. Cancel this out. And there's our 
constraint and load nicely visible on our setup. Now we are ready to run our analysis. Go on the model analysis in new, call it one, and it is a static analysis. OK, and click analyze. Now we're going to wait for the solver to do its thing. If we didn't screw up anything, then no errors, and we're going to get a nice complete right here. Yay, complete. No errors. Very good. Now let's visualize it, post process it. Okay, now let's go up and go to view, visibility. No, wrong button. View, select. There you go. Deform, beam diagram, deform, uh, data, and over here. Let's visualize the moments. So, take a look at it. We have bar and a play one moment, bar and a plane two moment. We have bar and b plane one moment, and b plane two moment. So we have four of these. So which one should I pick? Now, we need to remember our theory. Okay, there you go. Our setup is practically exactly like this. Our beam runs along this way in the x, y plane. If we do a section on it, we have and A and B. All the internal moments, if we want to visualize them, we need to pick plane 1 because that's how they act inside our beam, right? So now this can give you an idea of what do you need to pick to visualize stuff in here. So I'm going to pick uh, bar and A plane 1. There's no point in picking plane 2 because that's not going to help us with anything. So plane 1, click OK and let's visualize it. There you go. See, along our entire beam, we can see, we can also go up here to view, uh, to options, click on post-processing, we were in labels before, but come to post-processing now, uh, beam diagram, labels at peaks, or you can pick even labels at nodes, but that might be overwhelming too, because it will post a lot of information labeled at peaks, click apply, OK, and now we can even see actual values on it. We can uh, click the undeformed shape, maybe some, we like that better. Let's do the little animation here. <laughs> yeah, I like watching those. And if we don't want to see any of it, we can turn it off and just see the deformed shape with the original shape. If we go back to view, select, deform beam diagram, let's visualize something else. We can also take a look at the shear force right here. And let's see the band stress. So, okay, uh, yeah, there you go. So, what are these? We have band stress 1, 2, 3, and 4. They're all everything the same except look at this point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4. So, where do these relate? Well, remember when we were drawing our T and then we saw these? Well, this was the stress recovery. This is the point where he calculates the output, the results for us. And there it is, point 1, point 2, point 3, and point 4. When we were setting this up, we had the chance to move these around, and if we didn't want it here, let's say we wanted it here or something, we had the chance to move them around. But this is where it set it up, we left it there, so this is where it is reading and displaying us information. 
So if I uh, pick band stress at point 1, then I'm gonna get the values here. Okay, this is where those stresses are coming from. So did I pick it? Yes, point 0.1. Click OK and OK. And there you go. It visualized it for us how that looks. Another useful usual visualization tool or analysis tool is to go to list, go to output and uh, results to data table leave these uh, as is click OK and this one comes up and here we have the same choices right and let's say I wanna look at all four of those stresses that we just talked about so point one point two three and four all four of these at end A and B is the other side of the element I'll show you in a minute on the real life one and OK. And now which element do we want to see this information on? We can pick one or we can pick all of them. I'm just gonna go for all of them. Click OK. And it's gonna display the data table down here. See? Data table. There you have it. Let's uh, open this up so we can see so then there you go this is it we have ID every single elements ID the stress point one stress this point one on end A and A is this side of the element right this is an element from here to here and A and B if we wanted this, this side of the element then we should have picked and B okay that's what that is and here you can check your values here's max value max ID which element does it have the big biggest uh, value minimum value on which element sum average there you go and this way it's uh, much more easier to understand it numerically without actually looking at a picture or you can uh, save it as a data table and transfer it like that way okay let's put these back so okay alrighty that should do it for this tutorial make sure you guys give a big thumbs up for the video subscribe and tune in for the next one have a good day